start again. All right, we're going to show how to make scans using a Kinect camera. Uh, and this will be 3D images that can be sent to a printer for uh, as SDL files. Um, we're going to download software. We have two different sets of software. Connect SDK 2.0 download is what I entered into the search box. The first one that popped up is the one I want. And just do more with Windows, blah, blah, blah. Uh, S Connect for Windows SDK 2.0. Just follow the instructions, download that software. And then to view the files, type in Mesh Mixer Download. And this is also, both of these are free software. First one that pops up is Mesh Mixer. And you may need to sign in with a Windows account, but um, basically choose whether you're on a Mac or a, or a Windows, download the software. So I have already downloaded both of those pieces of software. So I come down, this is a Windows 10 PC. I'm just going to type in the letters SDK. You'll see it pops up that I have two pieces of software applications. The one on top is the one I want, SDK Browser V2.0 Connect for Windows. That's what I'm going to run. This is the window that pops up. thing to start with is this Connect Configuration Verifier. Now, uh, I've already got the Connect camera plugged in. This is the main power adapter, one goes to the camera, one goes to power, which is why the little orange light is on. And the last one is the cable that comes to the laptop. It's a USB 3.0 cable. You can, can you can tell it's got a blue piece of plastic in there. If you have USB 2.0, um, it tends to be white. The Kinect likes to use the 3.0, so you have to wait and plug this in after this piece of software is run. So I'm running Connect Configuration Verifier. It's going to pop up up here. And this window is going to expand. And you'll see the red X is the big one. Once that shows up, now it's time to plug in the Connect camera. So find the port that's a 3.0 port. And my little red X, after the software recognizes it, turns to a green check mark. I still have exclamation points here. That That's okay. It, it will bounce back and forth between a green check and an exclamation. Or, uh, that one doesn't matter. So once it's all verified, I can close that. Now I come back to this main panel. I'm going to scroll usually about three-fourths of the way down. It's a piece of software with the name Connect Fusion Explorer. So again, it's almost maybe four-fifths down. Connect Fusion Explorer WPF. So I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go and hit the run arrow for that. That's the program we're going to use to run the scan. When this pops up, I'm going to start at the lower right corner and make some changes. I'm going to set the volume of voxels resolution to maximum just by dragging the little slider bars over there. Next one up, volume voxels per meter. I'm also setting that one to max. And the next one, this is the integration weight. I, I've had good luck setting it about halfway, 420, 430, somewhere in there. Now for my scans, we're, I'll keep the minimum threshold depth at the half a meter and I only want to take it down to within about one and a half I'm going to even zoom in a little tighter so I'm setting it to 1.3 meters so the scan is going to look for things that are at a distance of one half to 1.3 meters from the camera. The last item we'll be focusing on is over in this panel for actions um, I'm going to, if you reset reconstruction, it refreshes and starts over what gets averaged into the scan. And when I'm done, I'm going to click on Create Mesh. It will save an STL file that I can name at that time. So let me ask my volunteer to come put their chin on the headrest. As far as the setup, you'll see... Uh, my volunteer Graham has a chin rest so that 
while I'm scanning, his face is going to stay fairly uh, in a constant position, fairly still. Um, for my study, I actually want his eyelids closed so I can see where the front of his eye is. The eyes are clear, so they, they end up weird if you leave your eyes open. The camera is mounted on a small tripod, and I've used permanent magnets to attach the camera to an arm that swivels. You can see a lot of little yellow tip marks here as I move the arm first to the left, then to the right, and then back. Um, I'm going to pause for a second or so at each of the yellow tick marks. So Graham, if you would have your chin tilted up as much as you can, and tighten up that little piece of cloth there. All right. Uh, I'm going to reset reconstruction and see what I think about the lighting. This is, gives me a chance. You can see his face is coming in, and the, the lighting looks pretty good. So once he uh, gets positioned, uh, chin is up, fingers out of the way for the swivel, and away we go. Ready? I'm going to start now. I just hit reset reconstruction. He's going to keep still as I move the camera. I'm just going to go to the right. As I move this, I try and keep the camera pointed towards him. I'm pausing briefly every couple of degrees. That's what the yellow tick marks are showing. and press on Create Mesh. Opens up an opportunity for me to enter a file name. Graham, you can relax now. <laughs> Graham, scan. And we'll save the file. And if I open up the folder where I saved the file, let's see, I had that on my desktop in a folder called Scans. Because I've already run Mesh Mixer, the file type is, as an STL file is already associated with the program Mesh Mixer. You can see some scrams next to me now in the background. The uh, camera is averaging in the blank space that's left where you used to be. Uh, it takes a little while to import the file, so be patient. Uh, no, this should be running, this will give you an idea. Oh, there it is. So we're in and well, let's see, it takes a little bit to, there he is. Graham, that's your 3D scan. And the goal was to get a scan of the nose and forehead region. That's what I'm using the project for. 
and let's see. You can tell I'm not an expert at rotating here. Okay, that's the gist of it.